So Juneteenth, Emancipation Day, Jubilee Day, Freedom Day. Freedom, freedom. The celebration of freedom should be encouraged and applauded everywhere and all the time. And tonight is certainly no exception. So let us remember the sacrifices of our ancestors. Let us glory in our rich and influential culture. And let us rejoice in the freedom that is our birthright. I'm going to end with a quote from the Honorable Marcus Garvey, taken from a speech he gave on Emancipation Day in New York City, 1922. No better gift can I give in honor of the memory of the love of my foreparents for me and in gratitude of the suffering they endured that I might be free. No grander gift can I bear to the sacred memory of the generations past than a free and redeemed people. Yes, I think so. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we come before your hollow throne on today as we celebrate this hallmark occasion of Juneteenth. On June 19, 1865, the day that enslaved slaves, God, were finally emancipated. We want to thank you for that. We praise you, O oh God, for your liberating power that broke the shackles of oppression and restored humanity to the disenfranchised on that day. We pray tonight, God, for change that you may allow us to encounter you today in the faces of those whom society has pushed to the margins. Father, we pray tonight that you would guide us, establish the justice you proclaimed on that day, that all people might dwell in harmony and peace, united by the great love that you have given to us through your son, that kind of love that binds us even right now. Father, let Juneteenth serve as us today, God, a catalyst of change change our worship, change our work, and change our world. We thank you tonight. We give you praise today for you said in your word, whom the sun sets free is free indeed. So we declare June 19 today, God, this is a day of celebration of freedom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Tierra Deering. Um, I am a employee of the Solicitor General's Office. I proudly serve under the Honorable Miss Sonia Compton. Um, and I am honored to be um, your songstress for tonight, um, singing, somebody took my program, I'm so sorry. Lift every voice and sing. Um, we are gonna do this the third stanza as a congregation that has been requested um, by the overseers of this program. So if that's okay with you all, um, when we get to the third stanza, the words are on the back of your programs. And I would like for you all to sing with me. Is that all right? I want to take y'all to church, but if I can get an amen on that last stanza, <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please stand. Lift every voice and sing to earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmony of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise. High as the listening skies, let it resound. High as the roll, rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing 
a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. We're facing the rising sun of our new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we tried, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days when hope unborn had died yet with a steady beat have not our weary feet come to the place for which our father sighed and we have come over a way that with tears has been watered. And we have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered out from the gloomy past. Till now we stand at last, where with the gleam of our bright star is cast. Now we'll sing this together. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Though who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who's passed by thy might, let us into the light, keep us forever in the path. We pray, lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. Lest our hearts, drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee, shadowed beneath thy hands may we forever stand true to our god true to our native land give yourselves a round of applause uh, ladies and gentlemen i'd like to introduce you to the vice chair of our board of commissioners um, Commissioner Kelly Robinson of District 2. He's going to come up to the podium and give us some opening remarks. Vice Chair. Greetings. 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 And I'm joined here by Vice Chair-elect Commissioner Carthen. and she'll come right behind me with some closing remarks. What a day. I will be brief, but I will speak from my heart. What is this about? Freedom, I get Juneteenth, but I want you to pause just for a second and think about a few dates. Think 1619, 1776, 1865, 1965, and just recently June 19th of 2021. Those are some significant dates in, in our history. Equivalent with July 4th of Independence Day, this is our Independence Day. But it's a unique one because it's really about the enslavement that everybody finally got the notice. It wasn't until the process was completed that it became official. We had to use federal officers to go down there and deliver the message. 
some people didn't get the message. Again, get the message that there was no longer oppression. They didn't, they didn't get to notice that, that it, was, it was over, that they were free, that they no longer had to struggle, right, for agency. They didn't, they didn't have to strive uh, or, or they were stripped from their personhood. Think about that a minute. Stripped of your personhood over centuries. But yet, all we were looking for was what? To be free and equal, right? Equality. Equality of opportunity. Equitableness of what? Resources. Access. Think about it. All of us are different. All of us have our nuances. All of us are very, very different, right? We have our divergent talents, hobbies, talents that we want to contribute to society, be productive. We're all different. But yet we can all coexist. Pursuit of happiness. This day is important because, again, here I am. I am elected. This is my fourth term. But to, 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 to be here and have the honor to give these remarks. I cannot forsake, again, in getting these remarks. I'm here on behalf of Madam Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones, our chair when she's out of, the, out, out, of, out of the country, and therefore I had to take dual role. But yet we all have a responsibility in the full board of commissioners um, in, in carrying this forward. All of us. We all recognize the importance of it. So if you think about it, let's just simply, if we think about, there's still healing that has to happen. It's not over yet. We're not there. We, we, we need those resources to heal, as the younger generation says. They says, well, we need access to resources. They need understanding, right? So one of the things that's important as I close out is that, think about this, is that we have to acknowledge the past. We have to embrace our current present, we must extend and fight for the future. Don't go backward. Don't go down. Stand. We must extend ourselves. This tradition is important as a custom, like in our families, rituals. It's going to extend us to the next generation. That's important. My generation to the next generation. My intern, by the time um, 2065, 100 years from civil rights, will be a senior citizen. We've got to bridge the gap. We all have a responsibility in this, this process. So every year we get together, we must, we must tell the story. I get history books and textbooks and revisionists. I, I get it. Uh-huh. But you still got to, you, you got to extend the story. You got you to move around it. You can argue and debate all day long, but you better make sure you pass it on. You have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to acknowledge what this means for us. I am so excited again as we, we gain knowledge. Right? In other words, you're not going to be told everything. You got to learn this. You got to learn to earn, to be in this place, what it means to be in America. Right? No, it's not going to be given to you, but yet we've got freedom. We want, yes, we've got to knock down these barriers. Yes, it's systemic. Yes, and I'm knocking them down as much as I can. But the next generation has to also, we all have to collectively come together to realize who we all are. We're just all equal. We all want to coexist live quality of life. So with that being said, we all are kings and priests. I want you, uh, and, and kings and queens. Sorry about that. Kings and queens. And I want y'all to hear me with this. Think about your royalty. I, I need you to embrace. Take, take it serious. Have a responsibility for like, no, I am what I am. Not anybody, don't let anybody else define who we are. So with that being said, I can take it no further. I'm out of energy. Uh, this was under cuff. But nonetheless, I've got our vice chair elect. And again, the future, she is the future. And it's my honor to introduce her and allow her to take the floor and to speak to the rest of the people. Come on. Commissioner Carter, give her a hand clap, guys. Well, welcome. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. Uh, I was not expecting to say anything, but in the words of my pastor, Dr. Gregory Sutton, be ye ready at all times. So I want to welcome you and say thank you. Um, as I stand here, I reflect on what this really means. On June 8th, 2021, the Douglas County Board of Commissioners passed a resolution to make Juneteenth a holiday for the county. That's major because at that time, it had not yet become a federal holiday, but we decided to go ahead and do it before they made it a federal holiday. And it was a 5-0 unanimous vote. So that just lets you know that we have certainly come a long way. 
but we could not do that without the people that you will hear from this afternoon. Those who came to us and asked us to do this. Those who stood beside us while we made this proclamation and resolution uh, to, to be an actual holiday. Um, it's not just a time off or a time for our employees to spend with their families, but it's a time of reflection. So it is my hope that as we commemorate this, um, each one of us, white, black, Hispanic, gay, straight, we all just want to be recognized and we all just want to be equal. Reflect on that. Thank you so much for joining us. We have some members from the Citizens Committee to honor Frederick Douglass with us this evening. We have Ms. Uh, Gwendolyn Parker and Ms. Ingrid Landis Davis, uh, and they are going to make a um, presentation, a gift to the county, and uh, do a reading of the, of the proclamation. So ladies. Oh. And we also have, just coming up the stairs, is, an, is artist, Ms. Uh, Sean Ray. She is the artist who painted this uh, picture that they will be presenting. And actually, commissioners, if you could just stand and, re and receive the beautiful painting. Uh. commissioned her to do John Lewis and it came out beautiful. I commissioned her to do uh, Beta Ginsburg Justice and it came out beautiful. So who better to ask to do Frederick Douglass? And we want to present this to the commission for all the work that they have done to get us to this uh, point. We now have a proclamation which when we started we had nothing but it was through the commission that everything that we wanted is getting done or has been done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good evening. I'm going to read the proclamation that the Douglas County Board of Commissioners uh, signed for Frederick Douglass Day. I'm going to ask Dr. Robin Zunega Ortega to come up here and join me because she was very, very instrumental in helping put the, get, get this going. And I don't want to, I don't want to leave her in the background because she worked very hard. Okay. She, she just got into town. She was working out of, t out of, the, out of the state. And so she, she just, she just, I just want her to know that we appreciate all the work that she's done. Okay, thank you, Robin. <laughs> so, I'm going to take one little privilege, though. Um, I don't know how many of you actually in your lifetime knew someone who was in slavery back in those days. I did. My great-great-grandmother lived till she was 111, and she was freed from slavery when she was a relatively young, young lady, uh, about 14, 13 or 14. And so um, she didn't die until I was old enough to remember her. I was about five or six when she actually died. And I, I'm telling my age, but uh, the, <laughs> you probably think, what grave did she come up out of? But no, um, she, I remember her stories and her stories of slavery and um, how they resisted and the kinds of resistance that they did. And so um, uh, I'm, I'm a link in that chain. And um, as most of you know, that link is an advocate for freedom and justice. So here's the proclamation. Frederick Douglass Day. 
Whereas Frederick Douglass was a great abolitionist, political visionary, and businessman who helped the freed slave community. And whereas Frederick Douglass was a fugitive from enslavement and fought against Klan rule in the South. And whereas Frederick Douglass stood with uh, suffragists to expand the right to vote for women. And whereas Frederick Douglass founded newspapers and served as the president of the Freedman's Savings Bank that helped civil, black Civil War veterans and the free black community secure loans and financial resources. And whereas Frederick Douglass extended his influence internationally when he traveled to Ireland and Great Britain to denounce the Irish potato famine that created dire circumstances for the people there. And whereas February 14, 1817 is Douglass's uh, birthday and February is Black History Month, the second Saturday in February is ideal for the annual Frederick Douglass Day in this county. Therefore, be it proclaimed that the second Saturday annually in February will be recognized as Frederick Douglass Day in Douglass County. And be it further proclaimed that the Douglass County Board of Commissioners does hereby proclaim February 12th, 2022 as Frederick Douglass Day in Douglass County. Pro so proclaimed this first day of February, 2022. And that's signed by Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman, Henry Mitchell III, District 1, Kelly G. Robinson, District 2, Terenia Carthen, District 3, and Jones Geiner, District 4. Thank you. This was my grandmother's and I used it to wrap up Frederick Douglass because it seemed appropriate. She never got to finish this, and I was always going to finish it. But the best thing I could do for her was just hold on to it. So if you have precious things from your ancestors, hold on to them. I was inspired to write the poem I'm going to read after seeing Tracy Ruckert Shaw's unearthing of an African American cemetery which had been lost to our knowledge and seeing how she brought pieces of history into our consciousness as well as seeing her bring artifacts and clippings to us to spur the thirst for knowledge of our deep, rich history. Thank you, Tracy, for, my, for being my inspiration. For I was and still am convinced that this is how you got started, known or unknown. Our black history is our truth. Touch the walls of a building of old. Let it speak to you of stories untold. It stands there ready to teach. Let its mystery unfold for you about our past hopes and dreams deferred. Lay on the ground that holds our bodies and fill the dirt that holds no peace, for it conjures up sorrow and grief. Go into the woods and lean against a tree. The warmth of its nearness will bring comfort to thee. Trees carry memories, some dark, some light, for its roots can run centuries deep and have recorded every plight. Climb up on the rooftop and gaze upon the stars. Let them kiss your cheeks as you drift in and out of sleep and fall into the mysteries of the deep. Go to the ocean and jump right in. 
Have no care of where you are going or where you have been, for you are part of the ocean, of the moon that shines upon it, of the stars that twinkle in the midnight sky, of the wood that is adrift at water's edge, of anywhere you lay your head. Because when history is rewritten, we will see ourselves and our ancestors in the sky, the stars, the forest, and the shining sea, in the skyscrapers and bridges, and in the flickering flames, we will see their remains, purifying the future for us to gain. Our past must be preserved and corrected our people must stay whole and connected to those that came before, for they keep the doors of the universe open to us forevermore, and our dreams will no longer be deferred. Dig deep into our history. Cleave not to that of others, Theirs are lessons to be learned. Ours are blessings to be earned. For even in grief, we are relieved of the lies we have received as our future continues to reveal itself of our purpose to this world, of our, our fate is getting ready to be unfurled. Our stories are our truth. Our existence is our proof of our value to humankind and to our code. Leave no one behind. For we are everything and everything are we. And half of who you see, the world has yet to see. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Parker. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Ms. Ray. That painting is gorgeous. Uh, thank you, there you are. Thank you, Ms. Zuniga. Thank you so much. Uh, hold on, hold on, Tracy. I'm gonna introduce you, hold oh, on. So okay. next, <laughs> we have Tracy Rooker Shaw. Uh, she was elected Board of Education Chair in 2017 and is currently serving her second term. She is an active Douglas County resident with a range of past and present volunteer efforts from the Douglas County Youth Against Violence Program to the National Tourette Syndrome Association. She is also a published author with the 2020 release of her book, The Ghosts of Douglas County. Please welcome Chair Shaw. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. This cannot be a Juneteenth celebration. You all are too quiet. Let's make some noise in here. It cannot be. <laughs> it is a long-standing tradition in the African community that we do libations. And that process initially in the continent, it, it involved the outpouring of water to um, recognize and call out ancestors that had done great work. Um, this, in a sense, modernized is our intellectual libation when we bring programs like this together. So we need to celebrate the Board of Commissioners for having the courage and the fortitude just to come out and, and create a program. And this is the inaugural program. So let's give them a round of applause. What an amazing, amazing time, and we are forever grateful for those ancestors who came before us. And I want to thank um, our community oracle, um, Sister Gwen, Queen Mother Gwen. And we've all had those days when we just needed to go sit in the kitchen and, and just eat cookies from the oracle, and we knew everything was going to be okay. So um, bless you. Thank you for that. Um, this journey towards freedom 
I want you to think about January 1st, 1863 was the first installment, legal installment, towards the liberation of African people that were encased in the yet to be United States of America. And a mere two years later, in April of 1865, at the end of a civil war, we gained full freedom. And while in 1863 that promise came through the stroke of a pen from Abraham Lincoln, um, it did not free all Africans in this country. It freed some, but not all. Two years later in 1865, at the end of the Civil War, we gained our freedom. And I want to say we need to give a round of applause for that. <laughs> Many Africans collaborated, they strategized, they worked with many communities for to, to be able to make it and survive so that we could be here tonight and, be, and it's our responsibility to honor them. And I will forever do that. This program um, needs to continue. We need to support those who are in the community doing the work, which is of researching and preservation. We need to make sure that we are, um, that is something that we all need and have to do. I just wanna just say again, um, you know, keep steady, make sure that we are educating our children, make sure that you are giving them a plethora of information to read, and make sure that you're extending out and, and incorporating everyone in the community. African history is American history, and that's why sometimes I struggle to celebrate it in February. I celebrate it all year long, as I do other cultures as well. So although Madam Chair is not here, I will say thank you, Dr. Ramona Jackson-Jones, for your leadership, and of course, um, Vice Chair Robinson and Vice Chair-elect um, Carthen. Thank you so much for everything you've done. Um, I wanna also thank the Chair, Madam Chair, for being here tonight um, and for bringing the beautiful proclamation. You will always be a leader in this community, and we thank you so much for everything you do. So with that, I said my remarks would be brief. I did not write anything, but I just wanted to come forward and just say, this is a wonderful day. Take it in fellowship and remember those who have struggled to, to, to make sure that you had an opportunity to be here as a chair, as a lawyer, as a doctor, as a citizen. Make sure that you celebrate and call their names out. If they've done good work, then you remember them, speak their names. I thank Joseph Broxton, my great-grandfather, great-great-grandfather, born in the year 1894. I thank my grandmother, Johnny um, White, for being a, 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 just a beacon of light in my life. I call their names, I respect them. I thank my father who passed on two years ago, Nathaniel Rooker, speak their names, and it will give you power, it will give you clarity, and thank God for them. So have a wonderful evening and celebrate. Celebrate, this is a great night, let's celebrate. All right, so we are, we are coming to the close of our program and we, it is time to hear from our young people. Uh, so Jaden, would you come on up? Uh, this is Jaden Cobb, he's an intern in District 1. He's uh, interning for Commissioner Mitchell. He is a sophomore at Georgetown University, majoring in government. Did I get it right? Mm -hmm. All right. And he's going to read an excerpt from the Emancipation Proclamation. Okay. Good afternoon. I am going to read an excerpt from the Emancipation Make Emancipation Proclamation. That on the first day of January, in the year of our Lord, 1863, all persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of a state, the people whereof shall then be in rebellion against the United States, shall be then thenceforward and forever free. And the executive government of the United States, including the military and naval authority, thereof will recognize and maintain the freedom of such persons and will do no act or acts to repress such persons or any of them in any efforts they may make for their actual freedom. And by virtue of the power and for the purpose aforesaid, I do order and declare that all persons held as slaves within said designated states and parts of the states are and henceforth shall be free. And that the executive government of the United States, including the military and naval authorities thereof, will recognize and maintain the freedom of said persons. 
and witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the United States to be affixed. Done at the city of Washington, the first day of January in the year of our Lord, 1,863, and of the independence of the United States of America, the 87th, by the President Abraham Lincoln and William H. Seward, Secretary of State. Now, before I leave here today, this is kind of like off the record, I want to challenge each of you guys. I just read a part of the Emancipation Proclamation, but I think... I would not be doing any of my ancestors or history is due diligence without recognizing the history behind the Emancipation Proclamation. I won't give a history lecture, but I will say, look into that because there's a lot of history that creates history. And also recognize that right now, in this very moment, we have the power to make change. We have the power to become better citizens, to make sure that other people aren't being repressed. And recognize your role in society as people who come from oppressors, who have been oppressed in the past, ancestors been in the past, and make a change, make a difference, and continue to make today better than yesterday. Thank you. All righty. Well, uh, I, I wanted to mention that Jaden is a, a past youth commissioner, uh, and we are excited to see that he is majoring in government. So, um, yes. And he's got his speeches on point already. So, Good evening. My name is Velocity Fastener Thomas, and I'm an intern with the Office of External Affairs, focusing on Keep Douglas County Beautiful. Hi everyone, my name is Monica Jimenez Fierro and I'm also an intern at the Office of External Affairs focusing on community engagement. Juneteenth prompts us to remember, learn, and teach the full history of America. Excuse me. <laughs> and to make sure that the contributions past and present of African Americans are accurately, excuse me again, are accurately preserved, taught, and to make sure that they are received and they receive due recognition. We must remember that America as we know it would not exist without the contribution of African Americans, and that includes Juneteenth. So let's celebrate. 